So is coding still worth it? You know, as an ex Google ex meta tech lead myself, I may be one of the most qualified people out there to answer this question for you. It is an unequivocal, no, it's not. We're entering an age of AI, chat GPT, no code solutions, an oversaturated job market where everyone in the world seems to be learning to code, including their grandmas, and general loss of consumer interest in downloading yet another app or bookmarking yet another website. Software engineering may be becoming another dead end job if it wasn't a dead end job already. You know, every once in a generation, we see the collapse of an entire career path. You know, in the past year, I haven't coded at all. In fact, I've been traveling. I just came back from Costa Rica. It was great. There was zip lining. I saw sloths, birds, monkeys. And you know what? I had joined this tour group. When I sat down for dinner with them, they did not want to talk about coding. Coding bored them. They wanted to talk about soccer the red hot chili peppers music. A quick pause, if you're looking to bring your side hustle to life, then you'll wanna check out our sponsor, Skillshare. Make 2024 the year your side hustle comes to life. Skillshare has thousands of engaging classes taught by world-class creatives who have launched their own lucrative side incomes. So whether you wanna build a subscriber base for your email newsletter, use AI tools to increase your productivity or open your first Etsy shop, Skillshare can help you get there. Skillshare classes are led by industry pros who have walked the walk and have an active community of members ready to cheer you on. What's new, they're introducing learning paths, which are curated class sequences that can help you master a specific skill. So for example, email marketing is one of their learning paths, which is arguably essential in today's economy. I found it extremely useful where experienced marketers will teach you everything you need to build your subscriber list from scratch and how to manage it efficiently so you can revolutionize your business using the latest modern tools. I know you're excited. I've got a great offer for you only for tech lead viewers. The first 500 people to use the link below will get a free one month trial to Skillshare. Share. That's right, entirely free, one month to learn whatever you want. So what are you waiting for? Check it out, there will be a link in the description below. Let's coin the term, shall we? The coding delusion. It's much like the college delusion where people were scammed into spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and wasting four years of their life on a useless degree which they viewed as the gateway to success but really led them into Starbucks baristas jobs. And so the coding delusion is similar where a lot of people put coding on this pedestal viewing it as the gateway to success Whereas really, it just leads you down this terrible nine to five slog of a job in which maybe you're getting paid 60K per year, maybe a little bit more, sure. But it was originally viewed as the way to become the next app millionaire, the next Mark Zuckerberg, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, or Steve Jobs. This is not reality. That was 20 years ago. And you see this all the time in Silicon Valley and software engineers where they're just saying, well, you've got the code. If, if you're not developing, if you're not writing code, then it's, you're not doing anything. You're doing some clown stuff. If you're not typing C++, hello world of for loops and if statements, do while loops, then uh, what are you doing? Now, by the way, you may be wondering, what is this beautiful mechanical keyboard on my desk? And it just may be perfect. The Keychron Q1 Max, I'll talk about it at the end of the video. The landscape has changed so much. People are no longer downloading apps or visiting websites. Most internet usage is now consolidated into the top five to 10 top social media applications like Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Maybe that's about it. However, on these social media websites, you now have code influencers who essentially are people who can't code, who have never coded in their lives. Maybe they're React developers and they're just selling you the dream that maybe you can be a cool programmer or software engineer. And really their whole entire identity revolves around making programmer jokes, coding memes, idolizing tech CEOs. And it's a throwback, a callback to the days when this used to be the path to success. And yet these code influencers will continue to sell you this Ponzi dream scheme of an idea that coding will somehow make you rich setting you free when in reality that is far from the case, coding itself has become a Ponzi scheme. Preying on poor, uneducated people who think that they're going to become the next Mark Zuckerberg if they just learn React. Let me tell you something about React. React is the language of the slaves. It was originally developed by Facebook for its mass army of junior engineers who could not develop at all and who had no logic or reasoning at all. I mean, these people just, they messed up all the time. And so they needed a language that was impossible to mess up in. And so they developed React, which was a language devoid of all logic control flow, where all you had to do was wire up the button to the state and everything else was immutable such that it was virtually impossible to mess this up. And any fool could be developing this. And so the reality is, if you're a React developer, which so many people are, 
you're not actually a real software engineer or developer because you're not putting to use any algorithms or data structures and there is no career path to anything higher than that. You're basically doing the job of an automaton slave that eventually ChatGPT will be able to do for us. It's also relevant to note, I'm one of the few software engineers who will actually tell you this because I'm able to step out of my role. Most other developers and people in Silicon Valley have their heads stuck in the grounds and they completely miss the social media revolution. They miss the no-code solutions, still thinking that STEM degrees are the path to success, looking to the old ways of making money where they get two weeks of vacations per year, making a good income of 80K per year. They think that's pretty solid. And yet they completely missed out on the social media revolutions and no-code solutions that have minted an entire generation of millionaires. What really happened over the past decade was the construction of an entire consumer layer, the media layer that comes between your app, service, or website and the consumer. And that is where we see some of the most successful people today working in. You know, I'm talking about people like Andrew Tate, Patrick Bet David, Mr. Beast, Ben Shapiro, Joe Rogan. All of these people are building media companies. And yet Silicon Valley seems to have completely missed out and not only missed out, but ignored this entire trend, pretending that it doesn't even exist. And yet this is that layer that comes between their apps and websites and the consumer. They don't have distribution anymore. And so while Silicon Valley is still busy competing to see who can be the best developer with the best Emacs Vim key binding setups and who can install Arch Linux the fastest, and I'll give you a hint, the best developer is whoever can write negative lines of code. All code is technical debt. Or stop writing code. You don't even need algorithms anymore. These days, everything is just powered by machine learning models and hallucinations. The rest of the world, meanwhile, has already moved on to better, more interesting things and faster ways of making money than the 9 to 5 grind. You know, this past year, I've taken a vacation basically every other month visiting Hawaii, Scandinavia, Japan, Italy, and Greece, and Costa Rica most recently. And during my travels, I met so many other remote workers and wannabe digital nomads living that Instagram influencer travel lifestyle because that's what people want these days. You see, the role of the software engineer was originally founded in the 1960s for a sedentary lifestyle where you would earn maybe 60, 70 K per year, not accounting for inflation today, can't even keep pace with inflation in which you would work nine to five and retire around age 60, 70, maybe never or so. And that was considered a pretty decent, solid lifestyle. And these days, it's just not good enough. It's too slow. It's too low pay. It's too low status. And it's really becoming grunt like work. And there are just better, faster ways to make money. I think in today's society, actually, if you really want to be at the top of your game and even to say top 10% of the population or so, you may want to consider going the entrepreneurial route. Now, of course, not everyone's suited to become an entrepreneur and it's pretty hard work and not very fun either sometimes, but it's easier than ever for people to become entrepreneurs these days, unlike in the older times. And arguably being a programmer is simply just not as high status as it used to be. And status kind of is everything. You know, recently, I was going through the book Vanderbilt by Anderson Cooper. And in that book, they've got these rich people, ultra elite families who are born with money. And the thing they realize is, yeah, they've got all this money, but nobody knows who they are. And so they spend the rest of their lives trying to acquire status. And status is everything. And so they're throwing these balls, these parties, trying to elevate their social status to get into elite social circles. And the problem with software engineering fundamentally is that you sacrifice all of your social status, your time, your health, your youth, your physical appearances, your looks, any sort of interesting characteristics or personality you may have in order to become just this nerd who all they have left with is money. Right, you're trading everything for that salary job because software engineering ultimately is kind of a, it's not exactly high status work. High status work would be the type of job that you would want to do even if you were rich. Something like say directing a movie, being an actor, maybe being a novelist or a painter, something that would get you some social credibility. Being a coder, a grunt worker. I mean, you might as well be a janitor at that point. I think it's also worth noting that there's two types of programming really. One type of programming is for slaves, the other is for entrepreneurs. But the slave type of coding are skills that really only work within the walls of a corporate company. And these skills are impossible for you to make money with, but may make you a good employee. Skills like unit testing, right? Companies love unit testing. React, Scrum, Agile, Redux, documentation, code cleanliness, model view controllers, design patterns, Java, doing things the right way. If you're doing any form of this kind of development, they're essentially slave skills. They're only really useful within the walls of a company, but they're useless outside. The real skills that will actually make you money 
are like PHP and jQuery. That's why all the PHP developers drive Lambos. Now, don't get me wrong. Personally, I love coding. Many times I think about going back to working at Google as a developer, just putting in my nine to five rounds. But the thing is, I'm past that. And maybe this is one reason, the answer to why you don't really see older developers coding anymore because coding is fundamentally like cooking. As you level up, you have to assume the role of the chef who's managing all of the other line cooks. The coding delusion is ultimately built on the foundations of an outdated university degree that's teaching you outdated knowledge and information. If you were to go through an entire college university degree, you would learn nothing about AI or ChatGPT quite likely you would be learning really outdated information like how to build an operating system from scratch, how to build a database system from scratch, how to build a compiler. I mean, sure, if you wanted to work at SAP or Oracle optimizing their database engines, or maybe if you wanted to work in the systems division of Microsoft optimizing their Visual C++ compiler, then maybe you can get into that. But I'm not sure that's what most people getting into software engineering are envisioning for themselves. With the internet revolution, information is moving so much faster these days. I think that's one reason education is becoming increasingly outdated. These days, we've got so many new, fresher opportunities that academia is still trying to catch up to. You've got Bitcoin, DeFi, Web3, Crypto. You've got the creator economy on X, TikTok, YouTube, where people are building an entirely new social media layer, revolutionizing marketing. And you've got, of course, AI, ChatGPT, AI tools and infra. And this is an entire generation of technology fueled primarily on data really not much coding there at all. And the opportunity in these may not belong to the coder so much because there's just not that much to code anyways, except for maybe a few UI front ends, some wrappers here and there. But really for those who are curious and technically minded enough to understand the technologies, perhaps tweak a few parameters and to put something together. And that may be where the higher leverage is. But you know what? Enough talk. This is the star of the show, the Keychron Q1 Max. Good stuff. And so this, the Q1 Max is an updated, refreshed version of the original Q1 keyboard. And it's just got everything going for it. It's almost perfect. Maybe it is perfect. You know, I've tested a lot of mechanical keyboards. This may be my all-time favorite, quite frankly. I'll explain why. Number one is these keys just feel so good. So you hear that sound? These are fitted with the custom Gadron banana switches, which are similar to the Holy Panda switches. It's like the tactile Cherry Brown MX switches, but these tend to be a little bit stiffer. Shorter travel distance provide a more pleasing sound. When you combine that with this aluminum gasket body, and this is double gasket, so the Pro model just has additional sound absorbing cushions in there. It just makes the sound extremely pleasing overall and the tactile response good for typing, office work or gaming as well. And to combine on top of that, these keycaps, they are double shot PBT, the higher grade plastics, and they're actually using a unique keycap design with spherical angle providing better reach, improving your typing speed. They've also improved the connectivity with this version. So in addition to wired, you also have Bluetooth wireless connectivity so you can connect to up to three different devices at the same time. It's very useful when I want to switch to my Mac or my PC. It's got the all important RGB backlight, very important when you're coding at night, if you're coding. And so there you have it, the Keychron Q1 Max. If you are a connoisseur of mechanical keyboards. I want to check this one out. And that'll do it for me. If you liked the video, give a like and subscribe. See you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.